been a while since it felt like this. This, 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 this. been a while since it felt like this. This, this, this. been a while since it. Today's Bronco chat, I wanted to talk about Matt Murray and his continual knocking the net off the pegs. Obviously, I'm not driving in the Bronco. I'm doing a bunch of work around the shop, getting ready for the spring and spring tryout season. But I wanted to talk about Matt Murray briefly. Now, I listened to Mike McKenna talk online that there's a problem with the post. There's issues with the post because Matt Murray's just teaching and using the newfangled uh, post hugging techniques, the RVH and stuff, and he's knocking the net off and it's not his fault, not his goalie coach's fault. That's bull crap. It is. Not every goalie in the NHL is knocking the net off. Some pretty big dogs like Vasilevsky crash into the post all the time and they don't knock them off. So it's not an issue of the post. It's an issue of the goalie and the goalie coach. So here's what I suggest. You need to have a better technique of post entry and post exit in the RVH so you don't keep knocking it off. We don't have to worry about Matt Murray in the playoffs because he's likely done now anyways. But here's some tips for a big goalie. When you're trying to land into the post, if you just crash into it with your pad and your upper body, you're going to knock it off every time, particularly if you're not using NHL pegs. If you're using our crappy minor hockey pegs, those things will be coming off a million times. That's on you. That's the equipment in place. You have to have a strategy and a tactical approach that matches the equipment that you have in place. Now, one thing you can do is as you're entering the post and you're crashing into it, reach with your leg, reach with your hand, and sort of cushion it and accept it as you go in there. And don't be hitting it with violence because you will be getting a penalty. Normally the referee will warn you once, and then on the second time, you will be getting a penalty and 25% of the time they're gonna score. So it's not the net's fault, it's Matt Murray and his goalie coach for not figuring out how to use modern goaltending techniques with the equipment in place at the time. I'm going to start with the pucks up high on the hash marks there. You're going to stand here. Tommy's going to catch the puck right here. And then he's just going to swing to the far side and try to sweep in the rebound. So it's a little front net swing drill. I want you to deny access and be violent on the second effort saves. First save should be easy, second save I want to see you battling. And try to go across the top of the crease, not back to the post. Just go straight parallel to the goal line. Nice. Fix your net. You're too deep. I want to show you something here. Fix your net. Fix your net. Here's the mistake you're making. Step out of the net for a second. As soon as he swings it, you're going like this, and you're sliding straight across here. Whereas what you want to be out here, and as soon as he swings it, you're coming straight. You should be making the save here, not retreating back in the net, because all you're doing is creating gates for him to slide it in the empty net. you got to jam him on this, okay? Hey, if you don't get out of the blue crease, you're not getting out of minor hockey. That's a better challenge. It's a better challenge. Both knees down. Nice. That's your best depth yet. As you're coming across, you're coming across, and when you got there, your padded flare out like that. As soon as he starts to swing it, your pads, pad's got to stay flared the whole time. You can't tuck it back under your butt, get to where you're going, and then kick your leg back out. It's got to stay pushing out there. Same thing the other way. That's it. Nice. That's a great save right there. Five more. Keep that pad flush and flare it out. Go to the top of the crease. Don't go back. Last one. Oh, 
Oh, snuck her in. All right, go grab a quick drink, kid. All right, we're back at her again. I want to talk about the trapper. We make a glove save, everybody loves us, get a better looking girlfriend. The glove is the business. Now, there's a lot of problems, no matter what level you play at, with glove fundamentals. And today we want to talk about some of those key issues. Number one, there's not a pain price if you catch it on the palm, heel of the hand, or in the cuff in the cheater. There is no pain when you catch it in the pocket. And the problem with these well-protected new gloves, it's a good thing, I wish I had them when I was a kid, but there's gonna be no pain if you miscatch it. And we know if we go off the heel of the hand, the palm, fingertips, it's gonna be a greasy rebound in a bad place. So some catching mechanics to start with. Before we get into that, terminology you don't need. They talk about nose over the puck. The hell is that? Just watch the puck. They talk about uh, tracking the puck. Nobody needs to track the puck, just watch it. It's very simple. You watch the puck come into your body, you watch the puck leave. It's very simple, it's very basic. And the same thing applies to the glove. Don't worry about trying to get your nose over the puck or visual attachment or any of these trendy buzzwords. Just watch the puck into your glove and catch it in the pocket. This is not rocket appliances. Some things with your glove position. When you're in your stance, your glove's gotta be comfortable so that you can easily catch the puck and see it out of your peripheral vision. We had some goalies like Felix Potman used to catch like this. We've got lots of goalies with the gloves clawed into the middle, but you wanna keep the palm square to the upward trajectory of the puck. We wanna have it in a position that's visually discouraging. When they look at the glove side and they don't see any net, they don't wanna try it. If you got your glove down too low, they're gonna to wanna to try it. Now, a National Hockey League player loves going right here by your shoulder, because the only way you're gonna get that is to put your arm up into it. They love going right by your ears. So some catching mechanics. As the puck comes in, we gotta cushion it. We gotta make the primary initial contact the pocket so it stays in there. That's a key feature. And there's two types of glove saves you're gonna make, blocking and reacting. I wrote an article back in 94 at Goalies World about the only two saves you're ever gonna make, blocking versus reacting saves, and the glove's no different. Guy snaps one from the wing, you can see the trajectory, you can see the height, you move the glove in position and you watch it with both eyes staring it into the pocket. Now if a guy backdoor passes to Ovechkin, you're coming over here, you're not leaving that puck and moving your glove to make a save on that type of situation. The glove's got to be in a good spot. That's why glove projection will save you when you have to block a puck and when you have to do reactionary save, we don't necessarily require that. All right, so as a goal with your catching, let's be better at turning our head, watching it into the glove. Let's not worry about the big buzzwords and let's be a better catcher of the puck because remember, the other team can't score when you possess the puck and your glove is the best rebound control weapon when it comes to that. Last little story about glove saves. Your glove position can allow you to make amazing saves that are purely accidental if the glove's in a good position to begin with. So I remember making a save when I was playing pro hockey, looking around a screen, the glove was in a good spot, puck hit it, and then the windmill happened after the point because the glove was available and accessible to the puck. And that's a primary goal I want to have for you guys besides catching it pristinely. Let's have a good initial position in your glove so it's acceptable to the puck's flight. So you can get some accidental saves because it's hard enough as it is. Let's make the odd accidental save so all the girls in the crowd can love your big windmills.